Hello from London. If you're a regular here on the YouTube channel or over on the site, you'll know that I'm a great fan of reading for language learning. Once you've got the basic grammatical structures of a language, the first two, three thousand words or so, you've got enough to work with to get stuck in to some texts. That makes a lot of sense because it's going to give you the extensive exposure that you really need to reinforce what you've learnt already and to prepare the ground to learn more. You can't do that just with classes, just with a textbook, or just actually with a lot of conversational practice. You need something more than that to reinforce the grammar and the vocab. And if you do a lot of reading, what you find is you'll actually start to pick up new phrases and expressions. And that's easier because the new words that you, that you come across, the new structures, will come in context. So you'll be exposed to natural chunks of language. Being such a fan of reading then, I was really pleased when Ollie Richards and Teach Yourself asked me to take part in the festival of reading that's happening all over YouTube this month. Ollie's just published a series of six books which provide uh, reading material for uh, upper beginners and lower intermediate learners. I'm going to read in a minute out of the German one, but there are also a series of short, short stories in Russian, French, Spanish, Italian and English, so six books all together, and I've put the links to them uh, under this video. Now, I'm not getting a cut out of this or anything, I just think these are really useful resources for you when you're at that sort of level and you're looking for material to read. Now, in these volumes, and I think they all follow the same structure, there are seven short stories. Uh, each one of them is about 25, 30 pages long, max, but they're split into several chapters. So each one uh, um, has a shorter chapter, which is maybe two, three or four pages long, which means that you could sit down and work through one as an upper beginner or low intermediate learner in one sitting and then move on to um, the next chapter and so on through the book. Now, I'll talk a bit more about how uh, the books are laid out and what other resources there are in here once I've done a short reading, but that can't be postponed any longer. So here comes some of my German and uh, stand well back from the net. Das Wesen, Kapitel 1, der Ausflug. Silvia ist eine Frau, die gerne wandert. Sie lebt im Harz in Niedersachsen. Das ist eine Region in Norddeutschland. Hier sind die Temperaturen mild und es regnet oft. Die Sommer sind nicht sehr heiß. Fast jedes Wochenende nimmt Silvia ihren Rucksack und ihre Wasserflasche und läuft zum Wolfskopf. Der Wolfskopf ist ein bekannter Berg im Harz. Im Harz. Er ist fast 700 Meter hoch. Der Wolfskopf ist, ein bekannt, ist bekannt für unterschiedliche Freizeitaktivitäten. Wandern, Joggen und Mountainbiken sind besonders beliebt. Auch am letzten Samstag wollte Silvia wieder wandern. Aber diesmal war es anders als sonst. Dabei fing alles ganz normal an. Silvia traf ihren Freund Jochen am Anfang des Wanderweges. Da Jochen ebenfalls gern wandert, kam er mit auf den Ausflug. Silvia, schön dich mal wiederzusehen. Hallo Jochen, ich freue mich auch. Sie machen sich sofort auf den Weg. Jochen, geh nicht so schnell, sonst geht uns gleich die Büste aus. Keine Sorge, ich habe doch ein Energiegetränk dabei. Jochen, welchen Weg nehmen wir? Den rechten oder den linken? Hm, lass uns den linken Weg nehmen. Aber ich finde den rechten Weg besser. Warum denn, Silvia? Weil man sagt, dass dort oft ein großes, behaartes Wesen gesehen würde. Glaubst du, dass da etwas dran ist? Das können wir rausfinden, wenn wir den Weg nehmen. Na gut, Silvia, dann also da entlang. Einige Stunden später gingen sie immer noch auf den Weg. Es war, bereits, es war bereits Nachmittag. Silvia fragte Jochen, meinst du, dass es, ungewö dass es, ungewöhnlich dass, 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 dass es ungewöhnliche Wesen in den Wald ge Welten gibt? Nein, das glaube ich nicht. Warum nicht? 
Ich habe noch nie solche Wesen gesehen. Du vielleicht? Nichts in diesem Wald. Was Silvia wohl damit meint, dachte Jochen. One of the ways to get the most bang for your buck out of reading is to make it not just passive, but uh, as interactive as possible. Uh, one way you can do this is by what's called elaboration, starting to think and try and personalise uh, the, the text. And one way you can do this before you start is by using the pictures which there are in the book. And then when you get to the end, you can try and summarise uh, what you've read so that you're again actively using the language. Now actually at the end of each uh, chapter there is a short summary which is in German uh, which will help you to be sure that you've got the gist, I think. After that, there's a list of the, some of the key vocabulary which has come up in the chapter. Now, these are words which are printed uh, in bold in the text itself. So if you see a word in bold, you know there's going to be an entry for that in the uh, short vocab at the end. Uh, at the back of the whole book, then, there's a complete vocab list of all the words that have come up in all the stories, or the, the bold words, that's to say. Now, when you're reading through first time, I would say just try and get the general gist, and I wouldn't, you know, stop the flow for individual words. You may find that you, as you go further, you work out what they actually meant, particularly with a word like, from the section that I read, Freizeitaktivitäten, and one of the beauties of German is that the long words are often made up of short words you probably know already, so free time activities literally, Freizeit, you might know Frei, you might know Zeit, and then you might work out that means leisure activities or free time activities. Energiegetränks, another one, energy drink, uh, sort of international, you might have guessed that, don't be afraid to guess the meanings. And then we've got ein großes, behärtes Wesen. Uh, a behaired, literally, being. A hairy, furry monster, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, go for the, the flow, first of all. And then you can work more intensively and try and pull the text apart, maybe, the second time round. Once you're sure that you've got the gist. There are also some control questions at the end. So there are five questions to check that you, um, you're understanding um, the flow of the text and there are answers to those at the back. So there's a lot in these books, I think, uh, to enable you not only to get some passive input, something that you're going to enjoy, but then to get active with it too, so that you're really reinforcing from various angles your learning. So, I'm going to leave you in suspense as to what happens with the hairy monster. Go easy on my German accent in the comments underneath. If you'd like to get hold of the German volume of short stories or one of the other languages, there are links underneath this video. There's also a link to the schedule of all the other readings which are taking place across YouTube this month. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the vibe Think about a thumbs up, tickle that bell, and share or be square. Auf Wiedersehen!